Hey guys, it's Michael from Concrete Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some problems that involve Boyle's Law. So Boyle's Law states that pressure and volume are inverse, inversely related if the moles and the temperatures are constant. Uh, in future videos, we'll take a look at how to approach these questions if the moles and temperature are changing. But the equation that's associated with Boyle's Law is P1V1 equals P2V2. So inversely related, this means that they move in opposite directions. So if the pressure increases, then the volume will decrease, uh, vice versa. If the pressure were to to decrease, then that means the volume will increase. So let's take a look at some examples. The first one says that a gas occupies 12.3 liters at a pressure. So we're given a initial volume, we'll call that V1. We're given an initial pressure, P, P1, and it's asking us what's the new volume, V2, when the pressure is increased to 60 millimeters mercury. Uh, when we'll call that P2. So you can see that the pressure here increased. It went from 40 to 60. So if, if the pressure increases, then we would expect the volume to decrease because of the inverse relationship. So all we have to do now is to substitute the numbers into the equation. So P1 was 40.0 millimeters of mercury. Uh, I recommend writing the units out because you have to make sure the units on both sides cancels out. V1 is the initial volume of 12.3 liters. P2 was 60.0 60 millimeters of mercury. And then V2 is what we're trying to solve for. So to, to solve for this, we just divide both sides by 60 millimeters of mercury. And then that cancels out. Uh, and you can see that the millimeters of mercury cancels out too, so we're left with just liters. So this would be 40 times 12.3 divided by 60, and that'll give us a volume, a final volume of 8.20 liters. Uh, 8.20 because of three sig figs. And that matches our expectation. We see that the volume did indeed decrease. Uh, it originally it was 12.3, and then it dropped to 8.2. Let's take a look at the next example. So it tells us that a gas occupies a certain volume, uh, it has a certain pressure, and then it's asking us to solve for the new volume at the new pressure. So this is V1, P1, and this is V2, P2. Since it's dealing with, boil, I mean, dealing with pressure and volume, we're going to use the Boyle's Law equation. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And then substitute uh, the numbers in, but actually take a look at this. The units of pressure do not match up on one side is millimeters of mercury, on the other side is ATM. So we have to convert them both either to ATM or both to millimeters of mercury. I'm just going to choose to convert them to to ATM. So we'll take 790.5 millimeters of mercury and then multiply by the conversion factor of one ATM per 760 millimeters of mercury. And you can see that the millimeters of mercury cancels out. So we get 790.5 divided by 760. We get approximately 1.04 ATM. Then we sub substitute the numbers in. So P1 would be 1.04 atmospheres. V1 is 25.3 milliliters. P2 0.804 ATM, and then volume two is what we're trying to solve for. So then we just divide both sides by 0 0.804. So 1.04 times 25.3 divided by 0 0.804, and we get a final volume of 32.7 milliliters because we have milliliters on the other side. Let's check if that matches our expectation. The pressure decreased from 1.04 ATM to 0.804 ATM. So since the, the pressure decreases, we expect the volume to increase. And it did increase because it went from 25.3 milliliters to 32.7 milliliters. Let's take a look at one final question. It's a little longer one, but uh, it's not that bad. So we have, we're have we given 200 liters of helium. So we'll write that as 200 liters. And so that's a, one volume. Uh, we're also given the pressure uh, we're, and we're given the temperature. It's placed in a tank with internal pressure, and then we're given another pressure. So then we'll call that P1, and then we'll call that P2. And then we have to solve for the volume, so that'll be V2 after it is compressed, where the, and then it gives us another temperature. But notice that the temperature stays the same. It was 
0.0 Celsius throughout. So we'll just ignore, uh, ignore that. So anything that stays the same, you can just ignore it. So that means we're just dealing with volume and, and pressure. So once again, we're using Boyle's Law. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Let's check if the units match up. So we have liters uh -huh, and we have ATM and KPA. So that's not consistent. We have to convert the pressure either both into ATM or both into KPA. Uh, I'm just going to convert them into two. ATM gets a standard. So we'll convert 600.0 KPA into ATM by multiplying by the conversion factor. So for every one ATM, there's 101.3 KPA. And you can, the KPAs will cancel out. So then we just do 600 divided by 101.3, which would be 5.923 ATMs. And that's uh, that's P2. Then to now substitute numbers in, P1 was 2.00 ATM. V1 is 200 liters. Um, and then P2 was 5.923 ATM. And then V2, that's the volume that we're solving for. So then we just divide both sides by 5.923 ATM. So it'll be 2 times 200 divided by 5.923. So we get the final volume is going to be 67.5 uh, liters because it's liters on the left-hand side. And let's check if that matches our expectation. We can see that the pressure went from 2 ATM to 5.9. 5.9. So the pressure went up, which means that the volume should go down because of an inverse relationship. And it did go down, went from 200, it decreased from 200 to 67.5. And that's uh, just a couple examples of, of Boyle's Law. Uh, really, once you get a question, just look at what variables are given. If you're given two pressures and two volumes, then you know it's going to have to be P1, V1, P2, V2. And then just look out and make sure that the units on both sides are consistent. And if you're having trouble with converting between the, all the different units of pressure, just ch check out my video that teaches you how to do that. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.